Hello everyone, I am Professor Srinivasan and in this short video I am going to explain the concept of LIBOR. We will be discussing what is LIBOR, how is it set and how it is used for various purposes. Of course, I will not be discussing in details the workings of all the products in which it is used but I'll surely discuss a couple of products in which it is used which will enable you to understand how LIBOR functions. LIBOR stands for London Interbank Offered Rate. It is an interest rate average calculated from estimates submitted by leading banks in London. It is a benchmark rate at which major global banks would lend to each other in the interbank market. LIBOR as a benchmark was first used in 1986. It was administered by British Bankers Association or BBA as it was called and it was referred to as BBA LIBOR. However, since 2014 when Intercontinental Exchange took over the administration of LIBOR, this rate is calculated and published each day by the Intercontinental Exchange which is why it is now referred to as ICE LIBOR. LIBOR is administered by Intercontinental Exchange which asks major global banks how much they would charge other banks for short term loans. It is based on five currencies which are the US dollar, the British pound, the euro, Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. And it serves seven different maturities which are overnight, one week, one month, two months, three months, six months and 12 months. The combination of five currencies across seven maturities results in 35 different LIBOR rates being calculated and reported each day. The most commonly quoted LIBOR is the three month US dollar LIBOR rate. These quotations are asked from around 15 to 18 major banks and after eliminating extreme values the average is computed for each currency across each maturity. Once this has been calculated, it is published which is around 11.55 am London time. LIBOR is used as the basis for borrowing or lending amongst institutions and corporates. In addition, they are also used as a basis for consumer loans. So it impacts consumers just as much as it impacts financial institutions and corporates. LIBOR is used as a basis for many standard interbank products like forward rate agreements, interest rate swaps, interest rate futures, options and swaptions. Commercial products like floating rate certificate of deposit and notes, variable rate mortgages, etc. also use LIBOR as the benchmark rates. And it is estimated that approximately 360 trillion dollar worth of instruments are priced on LIBOR. Are there any other benchmark like LIBOR? Of course yes. Europe has the European Interbank Offered Rate which is called as the Euribor. Japan has the Tokyo Interbank Offered Rate which is the Tibor. China has Shanghai Interbank Offered Rate which is Shibor. And we have our own Mumbai Interbank Offered Rate that is MIBOR. However, LIBOR finds global acceptance and is therefore the most commonly used benchmark for pricing of instruments. Let us now discuss some examples of LIBOR based products or transaction. The most straightforward example of a LIBOR based transaction is a floating rate bond which pays an annual interest rate based on LIBOR say LIBOR plus 0.5%. As the value of LIBOR changes, the interest payment on the bond will keep changing. It is also used to structure interest rate swaps, which are contractual agreements between two parties to exchange interest payments at specified intervals. For example, let us presume there are two individuals X and Y. They enter into a swap whereby X will pay a fixed rate to Y and in return will receive a floating rate from Y. Let us say the fixed rate is negotiated and fixed at 8% while the floating rate payment is agreed at LIBOR plus 1%. Let us also presume 
that the notional amount agreed upon is 100 million dollars and the swap is for three years. Remember that in an interest rate swap, the principal amount is notional and no cash flow is exchanged on account of principal amount. It is just used for calculation. The exchange is only of the interest streams. This means that every year X will pay a fixed rate of interest at 8% to Y on $100 million and Y in turn will pay a floating rate at LIBOR plus 1% on the $100 million of the principal amount to X. Let us presume that LIBOR today that is T0 is 4% and at the end of year 1 LIBOR is determined at 9% and it is 10% at the end of year 2. Of course, LIBOR does not fluctuate so much, but I am taking the liberty of such wide fluctuations to explain you the concept in a better manner. Presuming that swap is effective from today, the LIBOR applicable for year 1 will be the LIBOR which is determined today that is at T0 and the LIBOR applicable for year 2 will be the LIBOR which is determined at the beginning of year 2. This is the critical thing to know about LIBOR that the LIBOR for a particular period is determined at the beginning of that period. Similarly, if interest is payable every three months, then the three month LIBOR will be determined at the beginning of each three month period. So in our example, for year one, X will pay 8% on 100 million dollar that is 8 million dollars to Y. And since LIBOR for year 1 has been set at 4%, X will receive LIBOR plus 1 that is 4 plus 1, 5% from Y. In a sense, X will pay 8% and receive 5% which will result in a net payout of 3% to Mr. X. Similarly, for year 2, when LIBOR has been determined at 9%, X will pay 8% to Y and in turn will receive LIBOR plus 1 that is 10% from Y resulting in a net inflow of 2% to Mr. X and so on. So this is how LIBOR is used for structuring interest rate swaps. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, it is used as a benchmark for pricing various products. Hope you found this video helpful in getting a basic understanding of LIBOR. If you like this video, please do share it and do not forget to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you will get notified every time I put out a video and you don't miss it out. That's all for now. Take care and stay safe. Cheers.